We define chemical change as a change which results in substances with new properties. For instance, here we show a reaction whereby hydrogen peroxide is converted into new, new materials, water and oxygen gas. Let's take a look at the properties, in particular, their boiling points. The boiling point of hydrogen peroxide is 150 degrees Celsius. Water, we know, boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And oxygen at minus 183 degrees Celsius. So as a result, we can see we've created a new substances from this particular change. We can also see that the atoms have been re rearranged. Oxygen and hydrogen are paired differently in this particular situation. This second line down below shows what we call a balanced chemical equation, a shorthand to represent how the atoms have been rearranged. In a balanced chemical reaction, we look for a couple of features. When a reaction is balanced, the numbers and types of atoms on each side of the arrow should be the same. So let's take a look at this one, for example. Two of these. So because I have two of this particle, essentially then I have two times two, or four hydrogens are present. And again, the two in the front and the two subscript, O2, I have four oxygens present. In my product, I have two times the two hydrogens that are there, again, four hydrogens, and two oxygens present in the water, and two oxygens present here. Hence, this equation is what we call a balanced chemical reaction. This particular reaction is a, has a pattern to it. We call it a, a decomposition reaction. Decomposition meaning to break apart. Let's look at another couple of uh, reaction patterns. This reaction is sort of the opposite to what we've seen above. Instead of breaking apart, aluminum and oxygen are combining together. Uh, we, we call this pattern a synthesis reaction. Let's take a look at balancing this equation. The first thing I do is recognize there's two aluminums in my product and only one on this side. So I'm going to double this. If I now look at the oxygens, three on this side and O2 here, I would have to multiply this by three halves to obtain balance. It's a good idea to avoid fractions when we write a balanced chemical equation because you can't have a fraction of a molecule. So as a result, I'm going to double everything in this equation. And the new balanced equation here would be 4, 3, and 2. Let's look at another typical pattern. Iron oxide and carbon combining to make iron and carbon monoxide. What we notice in this particular situation is that the carbon and iron have sort of switched places. The carbon was without a partner. In the products, the carbon is paired up now with the oxygen, and the iron is by itself. Let's balance this reaction. I notice, first of all, two iron on this side, so I'll put a two here to balance out my iron. Three oxygens which therefore tells me I'm going to need three carbon monoxides, which in turn requires three carbons. So we'll put the three here. And that's now balanced. I needn't put one because that's understood. This pattern of switching is called a displacement reaction. In particular, a single displacement reaction. Let's look at a couple other types. In this reaction, again, we have a switching of partners taking place. The hydrogen is taking the place of the barium to produce the water, and the barium taking the place of the hydrogen to form the barium chloride. This pattern of reaction is called a displacement as well, but we call it a double displacement reaction is both substances have switched positions and paired up differently. Now let's look at balancing this. I'm going to take a look here. The barium, there's one on each side, so that looks good to go. Um, this barium has two chlorines in it, so I'm going to probably need a two here to double the chlorines. Now let's check on the hydrogen situation. Um, I've got two hydrogens here 
and two hydrogens here, four altogether, probably requiring a two here to give me the four hydrogens, meaning two oxygens, and if I look over here, I have two oxygens. So I'm balanced in this position. The last type of reaction I want to look at is a combustion uh, reaction. Combustion reactions involve making oxides of the fuel. So if I notice here in this particular material, I have carbon, it finishes up as carbon dioxide, and the hydrogen in the fuel finishes up as hydrogen oxide or water. When balancing combustion reactions, there's a particular pattern to how you go about balancing these reactions. The first step in balancing a combustion reaction is to focus on the element carbon. And in this case, there's two carbons, so I'm going to need two carbon dioxides. The next step is to balance the hydrogens. Altogether in this molecule, three, two, and one, I have six hydrogens, therefore needing three. The last step is now to balance the oxygens. There's four oxygens present in the first substance, three oxygens in the second substance, giving me a total of seven oxygens. Over here on the reactant side, I have one oxygen there, therefore I'm going to need six oxygens, and that would mean three O2s. So again, the pattern for measuring combustion, do the oxides of carbon, the oxides of hydrogen, and balance the oxygen last. The last thing I'd like to introduce when we take a look at chemical reactions is the concept of the states that are involved. So here's a reaction with um, calcium carbonate and hydrogen chloride. Here's a picture of what it kind of looks like. <clears throat> so calcium carbonate, the solid chalky material down here, is placed in hydrochloric acid, which is a solution of hydrogen chloride and water. I'm going to take a point now and just balance this, and then we'll introduce the states. So first off, um, calcium, there's one on this side and there's one on this side. Next substance I'll take a look at is carbon, one on this side and one on this side. Our oxygens at this point, uh, we have three of them on this side, one there, two there, three on this side. Now the hydrogens, two on this side, so I'm going to double this up, so that'll balance now the hydrogen situation with two on each side, two chlorines and two chlorines. So we now have a balanced chemical reaction. Now, let's look at what states these substances are in. So I'll look at, uh, first of all, the calcium carbonate. It's, it's this chalky material that I see that's present down in the picture. So calcium carbonate is a solid. Hydrogen chloride is hydrogen chloride dissolved in water, aqueous. So that's what I start with. The bubbles that you see present in this liquid are the result of carbon dioxide gas that's being produced. And at the same time, you produce water, which is a liquid, and another material, calcium chloride, which is soluble in the water that's produced. So that introduces our states. IB will often you require you to provide balanced chemical equations for the reactions that go on. Sometimes the states are required or not, so pay attention to the question and be sure to do what, is, as what you are required to do. Anyway, thanks for watching and do watch our next program on the mole.